Unuku Tunga Suga Tasha Yunga. Welcome, good evening, my name is Natasha. And I am going to be doing um, my research on Inuit Kuji Maya Tuganit and custom adoptions, the conservation of Inuit traditional knowledge, community, and kinship practices as part of Native Studies 380, the North and its peoples at the University of Alberta. So I intend to investigate Inuit custom adoptions by explaining the historical significance of the practice and its contemporary application, both the benefits and the disadvantages of the process used today. This paper will identify how these kinship arrangements support Inuit culture as well as stimulate healthy community growth in the North. In addition, I will attempt to identify where there are deficiencies such as insufficient training or in-depth review of adoptive families in the evolution of custom adoptions and provide evidence-based solutions as an opportunity for positive change. One source I'll be accessing is a journal article, Adoption Among the Inuit, um, by Joan B. Silk. Silk explains how custom adoptions were a solution to the alternative of infanticide or senicide due to the lack of provisions to maintain um, the number of people and dogs. Um, adoption creates a means in which children will mature and reproduce with little to no investment by birth families, meanwhile providing benefit to their adoptive parents. I'll investigate what evidence that there is that this occurred in the Inuit culture and when and how these practices um, ended. So that which Inuit have always known to be true. Inuit organizations are reluctant to intervene in custom adoptions because of the tradition and the knowledge and the values that it holds. Um, Inuit organizations don't want to in interfere with um, children being placed and typically it's um, the responsibility of the adoptive families or the birth families um, involved. The majority of adoptions are overseen by um, an adoption commissioner who's appointed by the Minister of Family Services and they have the authority to make the adoption legal on paper. Um, adoptions protect human life and sustain the Inuit population. It's also about something bigger than just the nuclear family unit, but rather the community as a whole and community building. Um, it's never about not wanting the child. And on the contrary, it's, it's about um, integrating children into the community and their place in the um, Inuit society. Quantitative data is very limited, but some communities do keep um, adequate records, and about 93% of all adoptions today um, in the Inuit culture are custom adoptions handled by adoption commissioners. Um, today, Inuit babies are adopted by Inuit, Métis, and Dene families. In yesteryears, Inuit babies were traditionally gifted to Inuit couples that could not have children um, for one reason or the other, infertility or... Um, uh, to elder, uh, to elderly couples that uh, perhaps needed care in the future or to couples that had less children than the birth parents. Um, these cu custom adoptions were viewed as sacred and the children were often showered with love and affection. The process connected the families um, and uh, it was a um, means of kinship and to just grow the, the communities. Also custom adoptions in the Arctic um, included children ages 12 months to 12 years old, following perhaps the death of one or both parents and close kin would take them on as their own. So some questions that I do have about adoption, um, Inuit custom adoption, are can the Inuit custom adoptions process be modified with a vetting process to meet today's societal standards to better protect the children. For example, mental um, support mental health, identify and modify behavior issues, prevent trauma-related sexual and domestic violence. Right now with Inuit custom adoptions, there, um, there are no, there's no vetting process um, in place. It can simply be um, the adoption commissioner is from the same community as uh, parents that have a child that they want to give up for adoption or that are looking to adopt a child and this commissioner will um, find and, and place children. Uh, what changes will present 
um, a win-win for both Inuit rights, Arctic sovereignty, and the Canadian legal system. So, for example, mandatory criminal record checks for adoptive parents, um, authority to perhaps a territorial government official who has an understanding of Indigenous customary laws in their region. Um, also, is there significant proof that colonial settler involvement and the European world, world view of what adoption means is what has adversely affected the behavior of adopted children and not the process or the fact of being adopted? Um, it has a very different connotation in Western world view uh, being adopted. It's a, a means of being unwanted by your birth family, perhaps, um, that you don't belong, you don't know um, your roots. Whereas in Inuit culture, it's very much the opposite. So how have we um, affected their, um, their, their view of adoption? Also, can there be an updated procedure to adoption that protects Inuit kinship and child rearing without damaging the rich traditions and culture of the Inuit people um, that they have been contented with, contented by for millennia? How do we protect the safety of Inuit children once adopted? Um, for example, accountability, community support, contact with birth families. Um, and lastly, what are the relevant issues in blending Inuit and non-Inuit requirements or specifications? Can there be a collaboration? Um, what are the obstacles to overcome? For example, um, with non-Inuit adopters, uh, minimum income requirements, there's separate bedroom requirements and etc., which um, are not present with Inuit custom adoptions. One out of every three to four um, Inuit newborns are customarily adopted every year in Nunavik. There's um, one uh, source that I found that it, this basically equates to about 50 infants per year are um, adopted customarily. That means 50 children are given to families um, and there's no checks and balances. Um, and sometimes there's there's no records of where they're adopted to. So strengthening Inuit rights and Arctic sovereignty by using Inuit custom adoptions in adherence to regulations that are accountable to a central Inuit governing body will better outline and protect the best interest of children today and preserve the birth rate of Inuit children to understand the blood memory of um, Inuit Kahuji Mayutuganit. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Have a great night.